Well, hello, good evening, welcome. This is Ghana Tonight. We are live money use up at Desawe Kanda. Also live on Tuesday Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279. All across the world on 3news.com. I am out for the concert tonight. It is emerging that the people in some of the affected areas by the Akosombo and Kong Dam spillage defied early warnings to evacuate until it was too late. That's according to the minister, right? The minister for sanitation and water resources, Frida Prempe, who has been making this claim. We'll go to the community tonight and speak to a member of parliament of one of the affected constituencies. Stay with us on Ghana tonight. Also, the Economic and Organized Crime Office, IOKO, has commenced investigations into allegations made by Professor Stephen Adair that one million CDs is demanded from contractors before road contracts are awarded to them. We'll hear from IOKO, uh, in fact, the ministry and also the contractors uh, as well. Stay with us. And also, former Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Professor Kwabana from Pombwating, has said that the forerunners in the new patriotic party flag bearer race have baggages which will hinder the fortunes of the party in going into the 2024 general elections. We asked to what extent past utterances will play a role um, in the election going into 2024. And we advise on uh, what's happened as well, captured in the Bank of Ghana's policy report for the month of September. It appears that between January and August, the non-performing loans recorded by the commercial banks in this country is quite worrying to say the least. And the Association of Banks president uh, will, be, will be the chief executive officer, that's John Ewa, will be speaking tonight on, on this. Stay with us here as always. We are very, very interactive. The hashtag we're using is Ghana Tonight on Facebook and Twitter. Let's get talking. Let's settle for Ghana Briefs. Former GIMPA Rector Professor Stephen Adair is being investigated by the Economic and Organized Crime Office for allegations of corruption at the Ministry of Roads and Highways. The Minister of Roads and Highways has requested Ioko to conduct a probe into the allegations. <music> Former Environment Minister Professor Kwabna Frempon Boating maintains he provided sufficient evidence to police investigators to enable prosecution of individuals he had alleged were frustrating the fight against illegal mining. Attorney General Goffredi Abouadame had earlier this month described a report authored by Prof. Boating as mere conjecture and lacking any evidence. What, do, what, what does he mean by hard evidence? I mean, what, as a, somebody who has written a report, what evidence do you expect from me, apart from words, documents, videos and things, pictures? I'm not an investigating agent. I'm, that's what my, my job. I was a chairman of a committee and I wrote a report. So you have to go around and see whether what I'm saying is not true. The Office of the Special Prosecutor has filed a motion for the dismissal of an application by a former secretary of the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining, Charles Bissu, to enforce his human rights. An application for the enforcement of human rights was filed by lawyers for Charles Bissu on 14 June 2023. Bissu claims that OSP by its conduct into a purported investigation of corruption and corruption-related issues about his person and his work at the IMCIM infringed on his human rights. There is an easy calm at Germany in the South Dai district of the Volta region as residents have still not received relief items from the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO. The residents who gathered at the church premises earlier in the day awaiting NADMO officials angrily stormed out after hours of waiting. Snake bites are the most common cases reported in makeshift health centers, seven flat affected communities following the Akosombo and Pondam spillage. The Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Kumabwaje, after visiting some affected areas, tells TV3 the situation is under control 
But there is the need for system strengthening. Now, we are not seeing anything significant apart from a few places where there were a few snake bites, which had been resolved because of the congestion and the possibility of contamination of water and the spreading of diseases. That's why we have brought them all this infection prevention system. <laughs> Well, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Tonight, it is emerging that the people, as according to the Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources, uh, that some persons in the affected areas so are going on up to it next uh, by the Akonso Mod and Bone Dam spillage, uh, defied early warnings to evacuate until it was too late. That's according to the Minister for sanitation and water resources, uh, uh, Frida Prempe. She's been making this claim, but members of parliament in these affected areas have not taken kindly to this accession uh, by her. And uh, this is something that we're going to get into indeed uh, and also get some reactions, especially because of the, the extent of the impact that we're seeing and especially communities in not, not just the three Tong districts, but also the South Dai constituency as well, specifically Germany, that has been heavily hit as a result of uh, this particular situation. Nelson Rossing, Dafia McBoy, is Member of Parliament for the South Dai constituency, uh, is going to be joining us in a bit uh, on, on this, and especially because of how this response has been over the period. I want to take a listen to the sanitation minister, uh, Frida Prempe, on this claim that she's making. Take a look. National security for taking up the issue as quickly as possible because we don't want what has happened at Akosombo to happen to, to us in Accra. The Akosombo spillage, even though VRA, NADMO, the Water Resources Commission came together to educate the people in the community did simulation exercises with them even at Mekpe. Yet they refused to leave. They didn't want to be evacuated. They stayed there till the end when we started spilling. Unfortunately, look at what is happening. And government has to spend millions of money on relief items, on education. The whole area, the water is contaminated. And what Ghana Water and Water Resources Commission would have to spend money, millions of money to treat the water before we can pass it through our pipes. So a stitch in time saves nine. But some, sometimes it's difficult to accept the situation. But uh, we will plead with all of you to accept it as it is. And, you know, let's all come together and ensure that we have safe. So that's uh, the Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources making that claim about what is said to have been done earlier. Now, the reactions to this, in fact, uh, the, the members of parliament in these areas that have been affected are not taking kindly to this matter at all, especially because of the impact that we're seeing. This is something that we're going to sink our teeth into right now because uh, also we are getting information that the communities in the three Tong districts are still grappling with the extensive flooding due to the recent spillage of the Akonsomo and the Kwon Dams. I'm talking specifically at areas such as uh, uh, Adidome, for instance, where we understand that some finding uh, temporary shelter at the Adidome Agri Institute, pregnant women are having to also seek shelter in some of the classrooms in the Adidome Agri Institute. And they have been exposed to the harsh conditions of the weather and also to mosquitoes there because there aren't enough mosquito nets for them. We have videos of what's happening right now in the night. We'll go for this quick break. When we are back, we'll cross over to the community and bring you live videos of what's happening 
in these areas, specifically the Adidome Agric Institute, where some pregnant women are seeking shelter in some of the classrooms there. It's not looking too good. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear what others are saying about M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. Who will be careful for M Punch Wana? Ha! Chesenami and Cassami Prod, let's say problems room. It's not my own idea, mommy. Papa patches and any other some kitua. I'm quite pointing on who shame me with your monom heavy beer and also mommy drew, mommy drew me fire and my own crammy, you know, who for one I'm quite more. Eba, and everything yourself. Be mommy, no, I do, and the whole wound to me, Nancy. And then you call end point, or mommy, and then the white dear, what's me a sorry, Nancy? That's end point for you. Oh, my brother, hello. Hey, what's your what? Okay, a free bra would be end point, what does it? I'm a quiet, you know. Me just say my name quickly. I'm passing on my email now, and I'm just not sure where I'm. Now we need to be here for the. The whole day now, Jarisa. You heard everything. I have secret. M point is my secret. M point from your party clinic. I'm free. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market. We take equal quantities of flamingo paint and this ordinary paint. We then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint. And the gentleman on my right will use the Flamingo Superior paint. As you can clearly see, Flamingo has the obvious better hiding. Furthermore, Flamingo has painted a much larger area. You know, one bucket of Flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market. Flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage. Flamingo paint, simply superior. Franco Trading Enterprise is your leading mobile phone, accessories and your electronic retail outlets. You can buy any item online at the comfort of your home from Franco Trading Enterprise. Just download the Franco Trading app on Google Play Store or App Store or visit our website at www.francotrading.com. You can buy all brands of mobile phones, television, air conditioning, home theaters and any other accessories. For online purchasing and more inquiries, just call us on 0501-502-670. Franco Trading Enterprise, we are still the home of quality mobile phones. I want you so bad, I'll fuck back up. I want you. I want to say yes, I can't resist. I want you. Have a goodness rich in milk and butter in Alpha Cracker. Yummy and deliciously crunchy. Alpha Crackers, simply irresistible. This advert is FDA approved. Everybody knows Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear. What others are saying about M Punch Homeopathy Clinic? Who will be careful M Punch Wana? Ha! Chesenami and Cassami Prod, let's say problems room. It's not my own idea, mommy. Papa patches and any other some kitua. I'm quite pointing on who shame me with your monom heavy beer and also mommy drew. Mommy drew me fire and my own cram, you know, who for one I'm quite more. Eba. And everything yourself. Be mommy, no, I do, do. And the whole wound to me, Nancy. And then you call end point, or mama and then the white dear, what's me a sorry, Nancy? That's end point for you. Oh, my brother, too. Hello. Hey, what's your what? Okay. A free bra would be end point, what does it? I'm a quiet, you know. 
me just to say my name quickly. A person of my name, you and a magina sabema. Now, when you fear for the one in there, you are a secret. A half secret. M point is my secret. M point from your party clinic. I'm free. Life can change in just one moment. In one moment, you have everything. The next moment, it's all gone, swept away by raging floods. Your homes submerged in water, your means of livelihood gone. Imagine the helplessness, the impotence, and the frustration. Let's come together to put a smile on the faces of the Akosomo Dams village communities. Help by donating cash, clothes, blankets, toiletries, food items, and medicine to our affected communities. Contribute to the Media General 3 Foundation Dams Village Relief Fund. Cash can be sent through the 3 Foundation account, Zenith Bank Ghana Limited, Kojo Thompson Road, Tudu, or through the Momo line 059743310 or Merchant ID 120494. Let's show them that we care. Get ready to witness the most dramatic kitchen battle ever. Drama in the kitchen where rivalries simmer, ego sizzle, and only one rival can claim victory. Two rivals, spatulas in hand, egos on the line. It's not just about the food, it's about the drama. Can they put their differences aside to create the most loving meal? Or will the heat of the kitchen prove too much to handle? Are you a wife or a husband? Are you a girlfriend or a boyfriend? Can you cook with your partner's ex in a bid to see whose meal tastes better? Or can you compete with your mother-in-law or father-in-law in the kitchen? Then this is the show for you. On Drama in the Kitchen, you get into the kitchen with your partner's ex or in-law and prove that you own his or her taste buds. Hmm. So much drama and love in one kitchen be part of the drama in the kitchen experience by sharing your details via whatsapp on 027-722-2641 stay tuned for drama in the kitchen coming soon to tv3 Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. We're live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. Let's cross over live now to the Adidome Agric Institute. Now, this is what's happening there as we speak. Take a look at this. And uh, this Adidome Agric Institute um, is in uh, one of three Tong districts affected heavily by the spillage of the water from the Akonsombo and the Pong uh, dams. Life in this makeshift shelter, that's this at the Dome Agric, is one of the classrooms there. And, and you see uh, what we're gathering is that pregnant women um, have been heavily hit. You see the pregnant woman there, and a number of them, unfortunately, don't have enough uh, mosquito nets. And so they're exposed to the harsh conditions of the weather. And they are sleeping in this place with other items and, and, and others in there. Now, these pr displaced pregnant women are faced with this ordeal, adding to the hardship they're already enduring. And with the flooding causing disruptions in these districts, the already challenging situation is, is compounded by, by the lack of proper shelter and amenities. And that's what you see there. That's what's happening right now. And some of the children who are, who are sleeping in this place as well as a result of this spillage of the Akonsombo and also the, the Bong Dams. That's the situation now that we're talking about. And, and this is specifically the Adidome Agric Institute. This is how the pregnant women and the children there are living. It's not looking too good. Now, let's go on to the telephone. Samla Kudetua Blakwa is a member of parliament for the North Tongue constituency. Uh, he's joining us on the telephone for a quick conversation on something that's just come up. Robo, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Hello? Hello, good evening. Great. Now, I wanted to take a listen to the Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources. She makes the claim that some early warnings 
were issued and given to your residents and others within the affected areas of this spillage, but the warnings were ignored, and now government is being blamed for what's happening. Take a look. National Security for taking up the issue as quickly as possible, because we don't want what has happened at Akosombo to happen to, to us in Accra. The Akosombo spillage, even though VRA, NADMO, the Water Resources Commission came together to educate the people in the community, did simulation exercises with them even at Mepe, yet they refused to leave. They didn't want to be evacuated. They stayed there till the end when we started spilling. Unfortunately, look at what is happening. And government has to spend millions of money on relief items, on education. The whole area, the water is contaminated. So this is the claim by the Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources that the people in Mepe, in your constituency, refused to leave. They didn't want to be evacuated. They stayed there till the end, before this spillage started, and this is what we're experiencing. Is this true? Uh, Alfred, these Akufuado ministers should stop adding insult to injury. We are pained, we are distressed, we are depressed, we are devastated. They should stop these things. It's, it's, it's getting on our nerves. We have had enough of their blatant lies. She should, she should tell us when, when. She should give us dates. When, when did they come here? She herself, has she, has she been here before? I mean, does she know what she's talking about? And, and move to where? That the people refuse to move to. I mean, move to where? Is she aware that we were here more than 200 years before the dam was constructed? That, that we had to give up portions of our land for these two dams to be constructed. I mean, the, the level of ignorance is shocking. They should stop embarrassing themselves that, that, that the people refuse to move. Move to where? Move to the classrooms where my people are now. Classrooms. She should show us where they constructed for my people to move to. Where did they build a safe havens for my people to live to? For my people to move and go and stay in those places that they refused to go. That they came and educated the people, sensitized the people and asked them to move. She should tell us the address. Where were, where were we supposed to move to? The classrooms, we should have gone to disrupt uh, classes. Where we are now, don't they see is this government not realizing that this is a national disgrace, disgrace on current leadership, that they didn't even construct safe havens for people to be evacuated to, and that they were not here to evacuate people? Look, if you come to evacuate people, everybody will know. Who were those who came here to evacuate anybody? Was it the military? Was it NADMO? Was it the police service? Was it the fire service? Look, look, more than 12,000 people in my constituency have been displaced. No fault of theirs. They could never have known that these volumes of water was going to be just released upon us in a very cruel manner, as though people at VRA wanted to commit mass murder. They should not get on our nerves because, look, we have had it. We've totally had it. And we will not accept insults, such fabrications, such blatant falsehoods, and that people were asked to move. Move to where? We save heaven did they construct? Are they not ashamed that after all these years, after the sacrifices these people made, you didn't even pay compensation. You, you have not finished paying compensation to them. You cannot even have enough tents. You don't even have any buildings for them to go to. The chiefs are appealing that relocate them to Saglemi. You can't do that. As I speak to you, we are using classrooms as safe havens, as camps. 
which means that education has been disrupted. Our children cannot go to school until, this, until there is a relocation. The only decent housing being constructed now is a partnership between my office and the First Sky Group. Where are the government houses? What is government building for our people to be resettled at? And you come and tell us that we ask the people to move and they refuse to move. I mean, move to where? I mean, where were they supposed to move to? Please, please. Look, Alfred, we have really had enough. We've had enough of the insults. We've had enough of the condescending language. We've had enough. As if, I mean, look, the land here are bona, bona fide lands owned by the people. They have every right to be here. They were here more than 200 years before, before these dams were constructed. So you can't just say we ask them to move. Nobody is a squatter here. That point must be made very clear. So if, even if <laughs> you had plans for people to be relocated, what did you put in place? What have you constructed? Where were the people supposed to go to? Is government not ashamed that, that the camps, the NADMO camps that they have erected are in classrooms? Are they not embarrassed? And they rather are telling that, uh, let's blame the people. Look, nobody will be gaslighted. Nobody will be scapegoated. The blame will be put squarely where it belongs. The VRA, which failed to do its work. The government, which failed to do its work. It owed the people responsibility. There's a reason why government controls our taxes, mm. our resources. They owe the people a duty of care. They should have made sure that people are evacuated to a place that they have created. And they should have made sure that the people took out their valuables in the first place, even how this pillage was done. This is not how it should have been done. Many experts, many engineers have told us that if this had been, look, water levels don't just rise suddenly. What were they doing many weeks ago? If this mm. had been done gradually, instead of waiting to the last minute and not notifying anybody and just opening the floodgates, please, look, look, if they knew what was coming mm, when parliament resumes and what, what we have outlined, uh, so also what in, is in coming search, in, in search for justice they will not be 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 further infuriating us and inflaming passions look we have we 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 are we are suffering in silence we are very angry we are outraged at the levels of cruelty the abysmal government governance the recklessness the lack of responsibility they should not add to our woes so you say they don't know what's going to come in the coming days when parliament resumes. What's going to happen? We are filing a motion for a full-scale probe. It will be live on television. Every Ghanaian will get into these matters. We will delve into the matters and know exactly what happened. Who are those who took these decisions? All these blatant lies will be exposed. Hmm? We will, we will insist that officials who have caused this, mm -hmm. who set out as though they wanted to commit mass murder, will be exposed and will be made to face the music. In addition to that, we will be demanding full compensation. Hmm? Instead of this minister seeking to heap insults on people who are already... Look, she doesn't know that when, you have, when people are down, you don't kick them. When you have ruined people's lives... You have destroyed people's properties, destroyed people's lives. The last thing you do is to add blatant lies and insults. We are going to demand full compensation, full compensation. And everything will be done under the sun to make sure that they pay dearly for their actions. So they should stop these blatant lies and, okay. this, and, this, and this irresponsible statement. Very despicable statements. I mean, that, that they, they refuse to move. Move to where? Where did they provide for the people to move to? Nobody is a squatter here. I don't have squatters in my constituency. So you can't talk to us that way.
Indeed. We're looking quite closely to the coming days, as you have indicated, and what is going to happen when Parliament resumes. Thank you very much for joining us tonight and, and also uh, the direct response to what the minister said about what happened in your constituency. appreciate your time. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Samuel Okuja Black is Member of Parliament for the North Tongue Constituency. You heard the minister talk about a specific area, Mepe, and that the people of Mepe refused to move. That area is in his constituency, so he had a direct word of response to this. But this is Ghana tonight. Coming up next, the Economic and Organized Crime Office, IOKO, has commenced to understand investigations into allegations made by Professor Stephen Adey that one million CDs is demanded from contractors before road contracts are awarded to them. Tonight, we, we hear from the contractors and the roads ministry um, on, on this matter. And first off, let's establish the basis for this. And uh, Professor Stephen Adair made that specific statement in an interview with my colleague George Quening sometime last week about the payment of one million CDs, some demands that people within the Ministry of Roads and Highways are making or make of these roads that's contractors before they are giving contracts. That was a specific statement he made. The Roads Ministry now wants investigations to be conducted into this specific statement. This is what Professor Stephen Adair said. This road contract will be given to you provided you put one million up front, though, not that when you get your money. Then, and this is what Akufuado must be thinking about, and if he knows about it, must be ashamed of, that now his people demand from you a certain amount before you be considered for the job. Why? Because then when you, they get it, whether you, the government pays you or not, they have gotten their money, as if people are in a hurry to loot the country before the end of Akufuado's term. One of the greatest disappointments of uh, Nane Akufuado's regime is that, honestly, he raised the hope of Ghanaians. Ghanaians expected that we had gotten the leader with a vision, with the charisma, with the determination. And it seems if he doesn't redeem himself in the next 14 months, he will go down in history of the, one of the most disappointing leaders. And what the co corruption, the arrogance, the thing that there is, Ghana is for them, and that, you know, without them, Ghana would not be there, even think, some of them thinking that they should tell us who should be our next president. God forbid. The nurses and the teachers who constituted about 75% of public service we go for loans. Well, so that's Professor Stephen Adair there. After this interview, there's been reactions uh, from anti-corruption crusader, and indeed now the Ministry of Roads and Highways issued a statement earlier today. That's just aspects of the statement. Take a look. They say that, one, the attention of the Ministry of Roads and Highways has been drawn to a video clip in circulation in, in social media space in which Professor Stephen Adair make some allegations of corruption in the public sector concerning the award of road contracts. The allegation was made by Professor Stephanade, a former rector of Gimpa, in an interview with TV3, a private television station in Ghana. In the said interview, first aired on Friday, 20th of October, 2023, Professor Day alleges that he has informed that information to the effect that persons seeking road contracts are told Road contracts, quote, will be given to you provided you pay one million upfront. These allegations are surprising at the least because the uh, processes leading to the award of road contracts are open, transparent, and competitive and in accordance with the law. That's what the statement uh, is saying. And um, the, the details in there. <laughs> Uh, and, and that's what uh, the ministry earlier put out today in response to what Professor Stephen Adair is quoted to have said. Now, let's go on to Zoom now.
Nazir Ahmed is uh, head of public affairs at the Ministry of Roads and Highways. Uh, he's joining us on Zoom. So thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. So, what, what's what's the end of, of objective of this of this call onto Ioko? What what exactly are you seeking of them to do? Uh, you agree with me that um, the allegations are very serious and they, 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 they border on the integrity of the ministry. This is a, a ministry that takes its integrity and its image very seriously. And so for such allegation of such serious magnitude, we feel that um, we have to invite the appropriate state institution to go into the matter. And we need to be very transparent about it. So that, that's why we've put it out there. We want to use this medium to um, call on the professor to assist Yoko to, to come up with uh, the truth and, and also call on the, the, the public if anybody have any information regarding to paying one million bribe upfront for contracts they should assist Yoko so that at least um, they can unravel unravel this allegation. This is not something as a ministry we are taking lightly at all. As a ministry, you have not received any or information or any complaints whatsoever that some officials associated with your ministry have made demands of contractors. Haven't any contractors come to you making that complaint that persons have come to them, even if you did not sanction that, to come and demand monies before contracts are given to them or, or to, to, to pay some money so they, they are favored in the process of awarding contracts? Yes, uh, we all hear things, but that is why we've given it to the appropriate body to investigate. And if there's any findings and anybody culpable, that person should be brought to book. The law must take its course because we cannot build a country, we cannot build institutions through hearsay. And the fact that I've heard something about you doesn't mean it is true. And so the most important thing here is for, for, for the issues to be investigated. And as I said, as a Ministry of Roads and Highways, and especially my minister being a lawyer, we take such allegations uh, very seriously. And so immediately we heard of it, the minister wrote a letter uh, requesting Yoko to investigate the matter. And we are hoping that they'll investigate it uh, very timely so that as soon as possible, these issues will be dealt with. And I want to repeat that we want to invite the professor to cooperate, give all information that he has, if there are names, if there are people he knows, he should he should he should name them so that we can we can we can bring a very a closure to this matter so that uh, we can know who are those um involved in such a uh, state crime. But you see, Nazar, even beyond what uh Professor Stephen Adai has said, your I mean the Minister for Roads and Highways himself has made statements in the not too distant past admitting that some officials at the ministry you, your ministry are engaged in corruption even though it's not the, corru the corruption of uh, trying to influence road contracts being awarded to specific persons but he says there's corruption going on in the ministry i want to take a look at this there are a lot of corrupt people there are a lot of thieves Thieves in my own ministry. You sack them, you employ new ones, and when they come, the new ones are even worse than those that you sack. So that's the minister from the horse's own mouth that there's corruption in the ministry. When you sack them, even the people who come come worse because it's, it's systemic. That's it. So this is this goes beyond even what what Stephen Adair is saying. Minister said that, and he was referring to uh, 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 contrast staff at the axle load stations, where they are supposed to check excess loads 
and they allow heavy duty trucks to pass on our road, destroying the very road that we've used our taxpayers' money to pay. He, he also said in that interview what he did. He sanctioned them, he got them dismissed. And so he took action on it. And so he was specific about that. This is a minister when he hears of corruption within his ministry, he takes step on it. And so this is another one, another test case. He has heard of it and he has taken action. I think he should be commended that he is not shading anyone. He's ready to expose everyone or anyone in the ministry involved in corrupt deal. And so it's an open invitation. If there is anyone out there who has any evidence, present the evidence. Uh, but you see, the, the, let me bring in now, uh, Nazel, Emmanuel Cherry is a chief executive officer of the Ghana Chamber of Construction Industries. The membership is also made up of uh, road contractors who also get government contracts to construct roads. Thank you, Mr. Cherry, for joining us here on, on Ghana tonight. And, and first of all, uh, to, to, to respond to this, what are the specific processes that when you're putting a, uh, your application to get contracts, government contracts for road construction, what process does it go through? I must be very sure about this. As a, an industry player, no matter what, there will be some element of bad not amount. It happens everywhere. We shouldn't pre pretend that uh, all is rosy. No. You know, as a political players, we have some political actors who applies in the various offices of the various appointees. And some of them normally abuses the friendship or the connections or the relationship they have with some of the, these appointees at the, bl the blind side of these appointees. And they uses their name in doing some shoddy things. So it also happens. But in the case of what Professor Adai is saying with $1 million, converting $1 million to Ghana cities now is not small money. And you and I know that the Ghanaian contractors are suffering today as we speak. So for a Ghanaian contractor whose money has already been locked up, to go and look for $1 million and give to a minister or an appointee for a contract, and then the contract to you and I know that from uh, of late, if you work, you don't have even a guarantee whether you'll be paid within a stipulated time as enshrined in the contract document. So all these things are shrouded with a lot of questions and then we need, we demand a lot of answers. Maybe there is something he knows that we don't know because this is the time for us to, uh, to clean the system and then the, to grab the whip. So therefore, if he has set the tone, uh, let's follow accordingly. So since we have the law agencies or the security agencies within the country, the time has come. It has offered itself so that at least we should put them into test and set a shining example out of this particular case. Maybe he has an example that, uh, how do you call it, an uh, evidence that we don't know. So by so doing, he can come out uh, pointing figures to where so he deserves, then we can at least interrogate the issues and follow it accordingly and prosecute whosoever that may be found culpable in this so that we can clean the system entirely because as a professor, he knows what he's speaking to. Me, I don't know what mm. he has seen and what he knows. So for me to at least to come to the bottom of this, the best thing for us to do is, is. to urge him to be bold enough mm. to come out and name and shape. Right. So, uh, Mr. Jerry, kindly hold on a bit for me. Now, Nazir, so this is the Chamber of Construction Industries. they confirming that some of their members have actually come across officials in the ministry uh, or persons affiliated to the ministry making demands on them that they should pay something, not to the tune of one million, but pay something. That's what the chamber is, is saying. You just heard them. It's not about hearsay. We cannot build a nation or build institutions based on hearsay. That is not what we are doing. We want the appropriate authority to investigate it so that the, the truth will come out. And if there are people within 
our ministry or the sector engage in such things, they should be exposed so that we all know them, we name them, and we shame them. And that is what we are looking out for. I see, but apart from you going to Yoko, is the ministry also going to look at instituting some internal investigations into this matter? Inviting Yoko to in, uh, invite Professor Ade, that's not what we've done. We are asking them to investigate the issue, the allegation. So whosoever uh, <laughs> the allegation will fall on, whosoever they need to invite, even if it's the minister, they should invite the minister. So we are not asking them to invite Prof alone. No, he has made the allegation and we have asked them to investigate the, the allegation. The minister is ready to subject himself to the investigation. A minister has made it clear that every officer, every director within the ministry should stand prepared to subject themselves to their investigation. So that is what we've done. Thank you very much for uh, this uh, response. And we'll see how uh, the, the coming days will look like. But uh, to Mr. Cherry, I, some of you have come up with, with this particular uh, confirmation, at least, uh, per what you're saying, your members, a number of them have come complaining to you that some people who either identify themselves as officials of the Ministry of Roads and Highways have made demands of your members. At least that's on record. As for that, you see, as I said earlier, there is no institution in this country that you not find this element of uh, charlatans among them. Passport office, they are there. Lances office, they are there. For several office, there you go today. You see them there. Moving around the one office to another. Gathering themselves under trees and what have you at the various ministries, agencies and departments, they are there. If you are greedy enough, you fall foul to their ploys. That one, we must not really, how to call it, rule, rule rule them out, it happens. But if all of us collectively should put our hands together to fight this system, I believe they would have been out of this, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, business. But because they are making good money from there, they are still there. But me, you will not get me. Likewise, somebody as well. But somebody as greedy as the person may be, may fall foul to this. And it's giving them job. And they think that is lucrative. So they continue to be there. So this is a welcome call, a wake up call to the ministry, the various ministries, agencies, and departments. Not Ministry of Roads and Highways alone. This is not the call for uh, Honorable Amakwata alone. It's a collective responsibility for all the ministries, agencies, and departments to shine their eyes wildly. That whosoever that comes to their offices and goes out and use their name for anything, they should try as much as possible to punish them very severely. So that you serve as a deterrent. Right. If that happens, this right. kind of canker but will be without I, I, what, what, what I wanted to find out is that, you see, there's specific instances where they, are, they, are, they come in to accuse members of this particular ministry. And we've just given you at least evidence of what the minister himself has said in the past. So how about that concern of... What has to be done going forward? Because in the end, apart from what Ioko is going to be asked to do, I get the sense that you are saying that you you uh, you pay monies are demanded, but not one million, right? Um, unfortunately, we, we lost uh, Emmanuel Cherry, who was the chief executive officer of the Ghana Chamber of Construction and Industries. Forgive me. We will try and rectify that connection uh, with him, but apologies for that. Uh, this is Ghana tonight. Now, uh, this is an issue that we'll follow quite closely and exactly what uh, the responses that we'll get from the Economic and Organized Crime Office on this matter and what the way forward should be. And we will try and, and, and get as well uh, further details of some persons who have also in the past made comments that monies were demanded of them. But coming up next, former Minister of Environment, Science, Technology, and Innovation, Professor Kwabnafen Pombwating has said the forerunners in the new Petroti Party flag race have baggages which will hinder the fortunes uh, 
of the party going into the 2024 elections. We ask to what extent past utterances will play a role in the 2024 elections. I want to take a listen to the former the Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Professor Komnaf Mpombwati, who believes that the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya's comments in the past would come to haunt him. Take a look. A lot of pronouncements that he made in the past, you know, you know uh, his enemies wouldn't have to pray those things back. And then we see, this is what I'm talking about. Like what? Like um, if the fundamentals are weak, you know, that kind of thing. Those clips, there are so many of them. And here we are with and that. Here we are with that. See, and the thing is, it, it's not his fault that he, he wanted to maybe deceive people. But then you've made the pronouncements, and now you'll be judged by those pronouncements. This is what I'm saying. Because he's the vice president, has been exposed for eight years, he's bound to have done certain things uh, which will come back to hurt him. This is what I'm saying, that he's more vulnerable than the rest, because the rest mm. didn't have that exposure. Mm. Kennedy Japan, what's the topmost quality you see? Well, I think uh, he's um, straightforward and um, sensibly will fight against corruption and so on. What are his baggages, do you think? Well, uh, his utterances in the past, just like the vice president. You know, these are things recorded which will come. So it depends upon how the... I'm sure they also should go back and record, recollect all these things so that... Well, so he uses this brush to paint both, I mean, the forerunners in this race, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya and Kennedy in Japan, that he also, that's Kennedy Japan, also has comments made in the past that he would have to deal with as well, or that would come to haunt him. The Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya campaign team thinks otherwise. They say that, well, they don't agree that this would have any material effect on their chances. Take a look. It's expressed by the professor that we completely disagree with. Um, of course, we are not surprised because um, it's an internal contest. He's already declared a stance when it comes to this internal contest. He is not a fan of the vice president. He doesn't support him in this particular contest. And so you should expect that his views will be one that would not in any way and promote the vice president. But he is not an authority on this subject matter. And so he cannot be taken seriously on this. His utterances in the past few weeks have been one that do not promote this party in any way. Um, it's been one that seeks to divide the, the front of the party. And for that matter, we do not want to place so much premium, premium on it. Every political party, every politician makes utterances and makes statements. And so if you see that the vice president made certain utterances that are haunting him for which reason you do not believe he can um, become the next president. Then the question is, how about the former president that has been president before and not just utterances, but has lived the presidency and the people have experienced him and realized what he can do and cannot do and yet is staging a comeback. The facts are these. The party has a manifesto. The party members and the party people, including the vice president and all other members of the party, have a responsibility to go out there and sell the manifesto, i.e. the message of the party to the people. Now, when you do that, you do not only do that to your personal capacity, you do that on behalf of the political party. And so Kennedy, a Japan team has also disagreed with this position put out there by Professor Kwabna from Paul Mboateng. But look, November 4 is just, uh, what, some two weeks away from now? So the showdown, we'll see what happens on that day. But this is your election command center. So follow up as we build up to this crucial decision day for the new patriotic party. But let's go into something that's really uh, concerning, uh, especially the financial sector, specific with the commercial banks, because the banking industry's non-performing loan stock increased by 53.6% to some 14.5 billion 
CDs between January and August 2023 from 9.5 billion CDs around the same period last year. So if you do a year in year analysis, this is partly reflecting the revaluation of foreign currency non-performing loans as well as the deterioration in some domestic currency loans. That's what's happened as well. That the proportion of the non-performing loans attributable to the private sector was 95% in August. That's telling. This is according to the Bank of Ghana's uh, this policy report for the month of August, September. If you look at what is captured in there, that of the public sector rose from five per, uh, from 4.1% to 5%. This is a year-on-year -year analysis. Now, so, Mr. John Ewa, let's do this quickly uh, before we go because of how important this conversation is and how it's going to impact on the private sector. Thank you so much for joining us. He's the uh, Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Association of Banks. Appreciate your time here and also staying to connect with us here on Ghana tonight. First off, you wrote off, I mean, I'm talking about the banks, commercial banks, wrote off over 2.4 billion CDs as bad debt, the non-performing loans in the first eight months of this year. 36.4% increase over the previous year's figure. I mean, what led to this quantum of, of loss we're talking about? Thank you very much. Yes, um, from the Central Bank's report, I'm sure you, uh, if you monitored the last NPC report that was released by Bank of Ghana, um, the governor talked about um, heightened impairment risks um, resulting in the non-performing loan ratio moving all the way to excess of 20%. Um, it's an issue that worries us as bankers and as banks um, to the extent that for every 100 cities that we give out as loans, we are very likely not going to get about uh, 20 cities um, in, in recovery, which is a matter that seriously affects a bank's ability to even do more financial um, intermediation. Um, what has caused it? Uh, multiple of factors. Um, we, we know of the uh, current economic situation. Um, people's disposable incomes have de declined significantly. If you have monitored the um, import data, you would find that uh, statistics indicate that there has been significant drop in imports. And these are businesses that banks have supported and they are not able to trade or conduct businesses because of the current economic environment um, and their, their profitability has been threatened, that also impacts the ability to service their loans when they fall due. Um, as it is now, interest rates are hovering in, in upwards of 30%. That also heightens the or increases the probability of default um, from the um, borrowers. So it's a multiplicity of issues. And we also have institutional failures, uh, which is something that as an association, we have presently taken on board and are working with state actors to, um, to find um, a way that when banks lend money, um, they will be able to recover as quickly and without all the current problems that we encounter. As we speak this morning, in fact, all day today, we have been having an engagement with the Lands Commission. Um, they are coming out with, uh, working with the banks, coming out with uh, a portal that will help banks to fast track our uh, mortgage and other uh, document processing at the Lands Commission. Um, last two weeks, we were with um, the new Chief Justice, um, her leadership, Justice Tokun, and um, it is also a step towards um, working with the courts so that in the unlikely event that there is distress on a facility, uh, banks can quickly recover the loans using the court system and they therefore increase their ability to lend um, to other uh, businesses that will be in the queue. So it's more or less a multiplicity of problems um, from the court system, from lands administration to registrar general's department to um, EPA um, to our lawyers also, uh, you know, kind of use the few loopholes that we have in the laws mm. to frustrate banks when um, we go into recovery. 
So basically, that is what um, I would say. And generally, the economic situation that we are experiencing as a country has also not helped with the, the, the situation. And uh, really do appreciate your diagnosis of the problem and then how it also threatens uh, the, the financial sector sustainability as we're looking at it. But I, I thank you very much for, for joining us. And this, the next leg of this conversation would be especially how private sector is going to be impacted by this because the NPL's 95% of it, we understand, is as a result of private sector non-payment. What is accounting for this? We'll have that conversation the next leg of this. Thank you so much for staying with us here on Ghana tonight. On behalf of the rest of the team, we do appreciate your company. Join us same time tomorrow. I'm Alfred Kansi. Have a good night. Ghana Tonight is brought to you by Flamingo Paint. Superior durability. Superior hiding. Superior coverage. Simply superior.